Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our honored guests, veterans from the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops and 3133rd Signal Service Company, Mr. Bernie Bluestein, Mr. John Christman, and Mr. Seymour Nussenbaum. Accompanied by Speaker Mike Johnson, Leader Mitch McConnell, Leader Hakeem Jeffries, Senator Suzanne Collins, Senator Edward Markey, Representative Ann Custer, former Representative Chris Stewart, Deputy Secretary of Veterans Affairs Tanya Bradshear, Secretary of the Army Christine Warmuth, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Charles Brown Jr., Chief of Staff to the Army General Randy George, and President of the Ghost Army Legacy Project, Mr. Rick Beyer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mike Johnson, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Thank you. Thank you all so much. We are so proud to welcome you here to the Capitol. It is so good to see you all uh, this morning. And I, I want to just uh, thank so much the many important folks who are here gathering, my colleagues in Congress, and of course, Secretary Warmoth and General Brown and General George and Mr. Rick Beyer, who you'll hear a lot about uh, in a little while, our, our friends and family, and, and of course, the veterans of the Ghost Army. We are so delighted to have you gentlemen here. Uh, the Congressional Gold Medal is the highest honor that this body can bestow upon any group or individual. And today, pursuant to S-1404, we are here to award that medal to the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops and the 3133rd Signal Services Company, otherwise known as the Ghost Army. Could you have a round of applause for that? Give you a little historical context here, although I know most of the members of this audience already know this, but these previously classified units were instrumental in helping American troops achieve key victories in Germany and Italy during World War II. These soldiers included technicians and artists from around the country, and they used their talents to deceive and divert the Nazis. They used inflatable tanks, artillery, and planes to confuse our enemy and protect our fellow infantrymen. Some of them landed on D-Day. Some of them paid the ultimate price. But because of the courageous work of this group, it is estimated that 15 to 30,000 lives were saved. Thanks for that. I wanted to share just one quick example of that. In March 1945, under the direction of General Eisenhower, 1,100 members of the 23rd Special Troops, using sound engineering, fake radio transmissions, and even phony airfields, made the Nazi forces think there was a group 30 times their size planning an attack 10 miles to the south in Wesel along the Rhine River. Their illusion successfully diverted the Germans and allowed the 30th and 79th Divisions of the 9th Army to cross the Rhine River. From there, Americans and, British, and the British changed, uh, charged into the interior of Germany. And within two months, the Third Reich had surrendered. Today, we have the privilege of honoring three of those men in the 23rd who helped with that critical, historic mission. Private Bernie Bluestein, Private John Chrisman, and Private Seymour Nussenbaum are here with us in person. Thank you.
I brought along a little, little visual aid I wanted to show you here. In, in my hand, I, I hold the Army's now declassified report detailing the contributions of the Ghost Army. This would be recommended reading if you can get your hands on it. But it's normally housed at Fort Leaven, Leavenworth. It was published 30 years after the end of World War II. And here's an operative uh, line on page 51 that sort of summarizes what this was all about. Rarely, if ever, has there existed a group of such few men which had so great an influence on the outcome of a major military campaign. That's really something, really something. We're uh, so honored by your presence here today, and I'm truly honored to officiate this gold medal ceremony and to celebrate these incredible, brave American heroes who serve as a model for all the rest of us. I know there are a lot of people who've been involved in this process, and uh, Rick Beyer, you'll, you'll hear a little bit more about, Representative Stewart and Custer, Senators Collin and Markey. I want to thank you all for your extraordinary work and your advocacy on behalf of these great veterans who certainly deserve this honor. Thank you so much for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors by the United States Army Color Guard from the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the performance of our national anthem by the United States Army Band Pershing Zone Brass Quintet and the retiring of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the invocation delivered by Reverend Donald Fox, son of Ghost Army veteran Fred Fox. Oh. 
Oh God, we give you thanks here in this historic hall. We borrow words from the traditional Jewish prayer and we, we thank you for bringing us to this day. Here we are assembled around the, the Statue of Freedom, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, Native Americans, inventors, leaders in peace, in war, and in civil rights. We thank you, God, that the men of the Ghost Army are being recognized as soldiers who made a huge contribution to winning World War II in Europe without hardly ever firing a gun. We thank you for the way that these 1,100 individuals with their creative courage represent the best in our nation. One God, one nation under God, indivisible. We pause in holy wonder and humor as we wonder, as we remember how they gained their place in history by fooling, by tricking their brother enemies, the Germans, as Jacob tricked Esau. We're grateful for how the soldiers of the Ghost Army saved lives and changed lives, as one wrote in his memoirs, Frightened men and women can become heroes and heroines by the grace of God. There is hope for the world when soldiers leave their storybooks and climb out of their jeeps. Fires have to be put out. And men, even dead men, treated as human beings. Amen. In the name of our paradoxical faith in you, our Lord God of hosts, and our God of peace. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Chris Stewart, former United States Representative from the Second District of Utah. What an honor to be with you today. What a beautiful event, a beautiful occasion. Some of you are saying, who is this guy? He looks kind of familiar. Uh, I left Congress several months ago because of the health of my wife. Uh, and I want you to know, Mr. Speaker and others, uh, there's not been a single morning that I've woke up and thought, man, I wish I was back in Congress. <laughs> But we're grateful for you, for your leadership. Uh, General Brown, you'll appreciate this. We were both Air Force pilots, plus or minus one second, right? I will not take more than my time today. Uh, to the speaker and the other leaders, though, I want you to know from a different perspective now, I understand that the American people are praying for you, for our Air Force leaders and for others. They're praying for our nation. And I hope you feel the strength of those prayers because it's sincere, because it is a troubled time in our nation's history right now. But we're here to honor these three heroes. These are my father's Air Force wings. He was a pilot in World War II as well. Uh, it's deep in our family's DNA as I served and many of our others have as my brothers and our children now. When I started this effort, as, as along with other leaders, there were uh, eight surviving members of the Ghost Army. Uh, one from Utah who passed away recently uh, at 103. Uh, we were hoping to have this commemoration before he passed away. We were not able to do that, but Stanley Nance is remembered. In fact, it's his granddaughter that got me involved with this. I was walking through the Capitol in Utah once, and there was this cute little 14-year-old girl here, there, and she had done a school project on uh, sorry, that's my wife. I should tell her that I can't take this right now. <laughs> She'd done a school project on her grandfather, who was one of the Ghost Army. And I got to know her, and I got to know Stanley, her uh, grandfather, and we became a strong advocate. She, this young girl, would come out here uh, more than once or twice, and I think she was responsible herself for getting more than 30 co-sponsors of this effort. A good example of young people doing something good. She would be here today, except for she's serving an LDS mission and could not, but her parents, uh, David and Michelle, are here, and we welcome them. When you look at these soldiers, 
and you look in their faces and you see their eyes, you know that our bodies get old, but our souls do not. Our spirits do not get old. In their hearts, they are young men. They are still the same brave young men who are willing to sacrifice anything to serve their country. And as has already been said here, they were responsible for saving tens of thousands of lives. And by the way, they weren't just blowing up artificial tanks or building artificial runways. Many of them were covert operations behind enemy lines as they would plant themselves and have conversations in hotels or in cafes to, again, to deceive the enemy as they would have over here these conversations. It was an incredible psych, uh, psychological operation and one of the most successful counterintelligence operations in human history. To all of those who have been involved with this, thank you. To those of you we honor and who deserve to be honored, and to your families who have sacrificed as well, we should recognize the spouses who were involved with that sacrifice. It is an honor to honor you. God bless you. Thank you for your effort. God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Ann Custer, United States Representative from the Second District of New Hampshire. Hello, everyone. Good morning. What an extraordinary morning to celebrate America and freedom and democracy. It's such an honor to be with you, especially with our veterans. Thank you. We're recognizing veterans from the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops and the 3133rd Signal Service Company, or as we have come to know them, the Ghost Army. And I should start by thanking my college classmate, historian Rick Beyer, who did the extraordinary work to bring this story to life. Wrote the book, worked on the PBS special, and came to me to say, could we get these gentlemen the honor that they deserve with a Congressional Gold Medal? And I said, sure, how hard could that be? <laughs> and it turns out it took seven years. And thank you to your colleague, your constituent, 14-year-old from Utah. Thank you to all of the families and the advocates who are with us today. We did it. And I really appreciate the effort that it took. During World War II, as the Nazis marched through Europe, this extraordinary top secret group was given an assignment. Deceive the Germans and create an opportunity for the Allied forces to turn the tide of the war. This required innovation, creativity, artistic talent, and a very special kind of courage. Using inflatable tanks and sonic deception, they used uh, sound of thousands of troops, trucks and tanks and jeeps, when there were only dozens of troops. And it worked. They deceived the Germans. The Ghost Army made it appear as though Americans had thousands of troops gathered on the Moselle River and in other parts of the theater. These secret soldiers were innovators, and they played a decisive role in turning the tide and winning the war. And thanks to their ingenuity and boldness, the Ghost Army, as you have heard and will hear over and over, saved tens of thousands of lives. I cannot help but think of my own father, Malcolm McLean, a World War II fighter pilot, similar to Chris's family. He uh, flew over D-Day. He flew 73 missions, and he was shot down in the Battle of the Bulge, in the very same theater where our veterans here today were fighting for freedom and fighting for their lives. He served for six months at the end of the war in a German POW camp, getting down to 120 pounds. And when he came home, he did not talk about the war. 
And I know from the family of Mickey McCain, from the Ghost Army, who are with me today from Keene, New Hampshire, and many of you who are my age at this event today, our fathers did not talk about the war. But with the Ghost Army, they particularly didn't talk about the war because it was secret. And one of my favorite lines was one gentleman who only would tell his family, I blew up tanks, without saying they were inflatable tanks. As you've heard, only seven members of the Ghost Army are still alive. And I want to take a moment, as others have, to recognize Private Bernie Bluestein, Seymour Nussen, Private Seymour Nussenbaum, and Private John Christman, and to thank their family members for getting them here today. Seymour, <laughs> Seymour and Bernie are 100 years old and served in the 603rd Camouflage Engineers, the Visual Deception Wing. They were friends during the war and reunited at a Ghost Army event after 75 years apart. I wish my father could have met you. He would be 100 this year as well. John Chrisman, who is 99 years old, served in the 406th Combat Engineers, the Security and Heavy Equipment Wing. And as I just learned before this ceremony, John can still recall guarding the sonic trucks as they drew enemy fire. Thank you for your courage. To these brave Ghost Army veterans and all the loved ones gathered here today, thank you for your service. Thank you for your sacrifice. It's appropriate that we should be here with the Statue of Freedom. And thank you, our country and our world would not be the same without your bravery. God bless you and your families. God bless this incredible country. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Edward Markey, United States Senator from Massachusetts. I'm immensely proud to speak today about those who served in the U.S. Army's 23rd Special Headquarters Troops and the 3133rd Signal Service Company. To many, these soldiers are better known as the Ghost Army. And after a decade of legislative effort, uh, since their contributions were declassified, we are here to award these troops the Congressional Gold Medal. They earned it. They deserve it. It is a day that will always be remembered in the halls of Congress. I thank my colleagues for their steadfast partnership in getting this legislation passed. Senator Collins, Congresswoman Custer, Congressman Stewart, and the leaders in both chambers who supported our efforts. Uh, Leader McConnell, Leader Schumer, Speaker Johnson, Leader Hakeem Jeffers, and uh, Congresswoman Catherine Clark. Thank you for your leadership. And Rick Breyer, thank you for all of your great work. Uh, I know I joined everyone here today to applaud the veterans of the Ghost Army for their valiant efforts during World War II. We can never repay them for their invaluable contributions to the Allied victory. Uh, and thank you to the surviving vets uh, for being with us here today. As you've heard, and we'll hear from others today, the Ghost Army's tactics were meant to be invisible, but today their contributions will no longer remain unseen in the shadows. These brave soldiers embody the bravery, the skill, the courage found in American heroes. They use their exceptional creativity and resourcefulness on the battlefields of Europe to create complex illusions and impersonated other allied units to deceive military leaders of the Nazi Germany leadership and other Axis nations. To achieve this, they, the soldiers used inflatable tanks fake radio transmissions, sound trucks, and stage intricate and cinematic battlefield situations that misled the Army about the composition and disposition and strength of 
American forces arrayed against them. Enemy forces were convinced that they were the ones at a tactical disadvantage. The ghost army deceptions led the enemy to adjust their battle plans, and without their heroism, an estimated 15 to 30,000 American soldiers would not have made it home from World War II. The soldiers recruited for the Ghost Army were not only men of muscle, but they were also men of the mind. They were creative, original thinkers who used engineering, art, architecture, and advertising to wage battle with the enemy. Their weapons were unconventional, but their patriotism was unquestionable. And after the war was won, veterans of the Ghost Army returned home and used their undeniable talents to contribute to their communities and our country as public servants, authors, and engineers. One of those veterans was my friend, the late Jack McGlynn of Medford, Massachusetts. His family is here today. Mayor Mike McGlynn, his son, Sheila McGlynn, Jack McGlynn Jr., Diane McGlynn, Dick McGlynn, Paula McGlynn, Karen McGlynn, Bernadette McGlynn, Kevin McGlynn, and like all the other families here today, just so proud of what their family members did during World War II. Jack served as a sergeant in the 3132nd Signal Company Special and was one of those soldiers who worked on innovative, industry-changing technology that allowed the battlefield deceptions to be successful. And after returning from the war, Jack served as the mayor of Medford, as his son would follow him. He also served as a state representative, and I got to serve with him in the Massachusetts State Legislature, this great man. And although Jack passed away in 2016, the first year I introduced the Ghost Army Congressional Gold Medal legislation, I'm happy to report that Medford's elementary school is now named after Jack. And he gave us another great local leader, as I said, his son. And I'm proud that he and his family are here today. Uh, and they absolutely are so proud of their father. When, when his son Michael asked his father in 1996, after all this information was declassified, Dad, why didn't you tell us? And his father said to him, because I'd be betraying my family and my country and all those people I served, said his father, a member of the greatest generation. That's who these men were and continue to be. So my colleagues and I introduced the legislation to recognize and honor the Ghost Army with colleagues from both sides of the aisle and from both chambers. And that same bipartisanship is here today. It's no small feat to get all these congressional leaders in this room together, <laughs> smiling and in agreement. It's like... <laughs> it's like a political Haley Comet. <laughs> but the heroes of the Ghost Army and their families are used to defying their surroundings for the sake of making history. So we come together in celebration today, not just simply for the Ghost Army, but also to keep alive the memory of all of our veterans and the families of those who are gone, so that the generations that come will know about all of these extraordinary American soldiers. Congratulations to the families. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Susan Collins, United States Senator from Maine. Thank you. What an extraordinary honor it is to participate in this Congressional Gold Medal Ceremony for the soldiers of the Ghost Army. Today, we finally will give long overdue recognition to these extraordinary soldiers for their brave and resourceful service during World War II. And isn't it wonderful that three of them are here with us today?
More than a thousand soldiers from the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops and the 3133rd Signal Service Company volunteered for a perilous mission to outwit and confound the forces of Nazi Germany. Among these soldiers was Private First Class Gardner Stone of Poland, Maine. I'm delighted that his daughter, Carol Allen, her husband, Clarence, and their son, Craig, are among the families with us today for this much deserved and long overdue recognition. I also want to recognize Justice Andrew Mead of the Maine Supreme Judicial Court and his wife, Kelly, who have also traveled to Washington to join us. I want to give full credit to Justice Mead. He was the one who first contacted me and educated me about the Ghost Army. I'm so grateful that he did. His father was just a sophomore at the University of Maine when he enlisted in the Army at the Recruiting Center in Bangor, Maine. He was a member of the Signal Service Company and was deployed to Italy in early 1995. Also with us here today is Melinda Skelton McKinney from Wyndham, Maine, who honors her father, William Skelton's service in the Ghost Army. William served as a captain in the Camouflage Engineers Unit. He received the Bronze Star for meritorious service for five battle engagements. These veterans were among the hand-picked soldiers who volunteered for the Ghost Army's remarkable assignment on the front lines in Europe. Using visual deceptions like inflatable tanks, aircraft, and artillery, loudspeakers, and fake radio transmissions, this unit outmaneuvered and deceived the Nazis. At great personal risk, these soldiers successfully diverted enemy resources and, as we have heard today, saved tens of thousands of American lives. The courage and ingenuity of these top secret units were pivotal across the European theater in World War II. And like Annie Kutzler, my father also was a veteran of the Battle of the Bulge where he was wounded twice and, and secured two Purple Hearts. The ingenuity and contributions of the Ghost Army were classified for decades without its members receiving the recognition that they deserved. It was not until 1996 that their heroic actions were declassified and the American public began to learn the full scope of their contributions to achieving our allied victory. I was so proud to co-sponsor in the Senate with Senator Markey the bipartisan, bicameral legislation to honor these unsung heroes with Congress's highest civilian award. And today, finally, today, Congress will bestow this long-awaited honor on these deserving veterans. May God bless these heroes and their families, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, performing the song American Patrol is the United States Army Band Pershing's own Brass Quintet. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries, Democratic Leader of the United States House of Representatives. Speaker Johnson, Leader McConnell, to Representative Custer, Representative Stewart, Senator Markey, Senator Collins, uh, members of Congress, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, veterans of the 23rd Headquarters, Special Troops, of course, acknowledging the 3133rd Signal Service Company, families of the Ghost Army, and all those assembled. Good morning, and thank you all for your presence here today. It's a high honor and a distinct privilege to offer my heartfelt and deepest respect on behalf of House Democrats to the Ghost Army of World War II. As they are presented with the Congressional Gold Medal, Congress's highest honor. During World War II, Winston Churchill once observed that in wartime, truth is so precious that she should always be attended by a bodyguard of deception. We gather today to pay homage and to honor the legacy of a group of covert creative, and courageous American war heroes who guarded truth and our precious troops with righteous deception. The members of the Ghost Army were artists, architects, actors, radio broadcasters, fashion designers, engineers, lawyers, and more. But above all else, they were great patriots. They were daring, determined, and devoted. The Ghost Army duped the Nazis, saved tens of thousands of lives, and helped America secure a decisive victory in World War II to make sure that freedom prevailed over fascism. Yet their story was, of course, a classified secret for half a century. And many Ghost Army patriots took that secret to their grave. Today's ceremony, therefore, in this Congressional Gold Medal, reaffirms our commitment to remembrance and reverence as we honor all of these patriots, including Bernie Bluestein, John Christman, and Seymour Nussenbaum, who happens to be from Brooklyn. <laughs> Somehow, some way, Brooklyn is always in the house. <laughs> it's an honor to be in your presence because there is no higher responsibility and no greater moral obligation that we have as public servants than to be there at all times for the brave men and women who have been there for us in uniform. We salute the ingenuity of their spirit, creative brilliance, and the bravery they displayed in risking their lives to confuse and deceive the Nazis on the battlefield. President Eisenhower once reflected when talking about World War II that every war is going to astonish you in the way it occurred and in the way it is carried out. Heroes and patriots, we thank and honor the members of the Ghost Army for their unique service 
to our nation, as well as for their commitment to saving lives, defending democracy, and standing up for freedom in the face of tyranny. The ingenuity and valor of the Ghost Army has astonished a grateful nation. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor. May God bless all of you, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mitch McConnell, Republican Leader of the United States Senate. Good morning. It'd be tough to find a story that better captures the extraordinary breadth of our nation's wartime experience than the legend of the Ghost Army, a story of commitment and resolve, bravery and devotion, and remarkable talent and ingenuity. The crucible of the Second World War demanded that best America had to offer on every single front. But the Ghost Army may have been the only place in history where you could find a demolition specialist like Jack Chrisman, a counterfeit patch designer like Bernie Bluestein, and Seymour Neusebaum, all working toward the same goal, fooling the enemy. It's the only place where a kid from a hometown of Louisville like Georgia Toole could find himself at the center of some of the war's most sensitive high-tech breakthroughs. The sonic deception, a mission that I'm proud to say was forged in Kentucky at Fort Knox. Our nation has been slow to recognize these men's incredible achievements and of course, that was partly by design. They weren't just helping win a world war. Whether they knew it or not, they were developing top secret ways to help preserve a hard-won peace through the Cold War. But today, today the veil of secrecy is gone. And when I read incredible stories like Jack's, Bernie's, or Seymour's, I think about my own father's path across Europe in the spring of 1945 as a foot soldier in Patton's army. I think about how he made it home to my mom and me after two thirds of his company was wiped out. And I think about how these stories are intertwined, how, as one Ghost Army veteran put it, sparing one mother or one new bride, the agony of putting a gold star in their front window was what his unit was all about. So to Seymour, Bernie, and Jack, and to your comrades not with us today, a grateful nation knows how you answered the call in its time of need. America will never forget your service, and I'm so very proud to join in honoring you today. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mike Johnson, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. What a, what a great event this is, has been. Thank you, uh, Leader McConnell and, and all of my friends and colleagues here. Today we honor those who passed and those who have survived to tell this great tale of the Ghost Army. 
Privates Bluestein, Christman, Nussenbaum, it's a true privilege to meet you all, and from the bottom of our hearts, all the applause today is well-earned, well-deserved, and we thank you for serving our country as you have. Sun Tzu taught that all warfare, all warfare is deception. And in the final years of the war, this group applied that principle to force the Nazis to divert resources away from the real threat. When our, when our troops were near, this group made the enemy believe they were far away, and when we were small, they made the enemy believe we were much larger. And it has been, as has been noted here, a total of 1,100 men in the 23rd served in Germany and France, and 200 men in the 31, 33rd, they served in Italy. They gave their talents and their lives to defeat the Nazis and preserve freedom around the world, and for that, we are forever grateful. Uh, Hakeem, I wanted to raise you your, uh, your Brooklyn. I'll see your Brooklyn and raise you a Louisianian, okay? And Mitch, you can get a Louisvillian, okay? Uh, I, uh, I just, one more story to highlight. And I wish, don't you all wish we had time to highlight every one of the individuals who served so valiantly. But I, I want to tell you about Dim, uh, Jim Steig. He was born in, in uh, 1922. He was the middle, of, uh, middle child of five children. He grew up on a farm, rural Louisiana. And while he was enrolled in art school, uh, Jim registered for the draft, and he went on to serve in the Army's 23rd in the Special Troops. As a part of his covert unit, he helped make fake tire marks, and he, he, he pumped pre-recorded audio across enemy lines through camouflage speakers. When he wasn't making inflatable artillery, Jim made portraits of his fellow soldiers and even of Russian refugees that his unit cared for. He and his fellow artist soldiers would even put on art shows in their tents, little humanity on the battlefield. Sadly, we know, history tells us, and the story records, that many of those that Jim painted did not even live to see the end of the war. They, they serve as reminders of the heavy cost of freedom and the devastating effects of tyranny. But over the course of the war, the Nazis regularly stole great masterpieces in an attempt, as you know, to consolidate power and crush the human spirit. But here's the thing. Just as the enemies of freedom were stealing and destroying the world's great works of art, Men like Jim Steig were using their God-given talents, creating new works of art, to defeat our enemies and uplift the spirits of their fellow soldiers. After his time in the military, Jim uh, moved to New Orleans, where he became the city's most influential printmaker. He spent four decades teaching at Tulane University and mentored countless Louisiana art students. Those who knew Jim remember him as a problem solver. He used his creative talents for the good of his fellow soldiers and for the good of our country and for the good of all his students and his fellow man. And while Jim has already passed, his family is here, his wife Frances, they're with us today up from New Orleans. It's a great privilege to welcome you all here. Would you raise your hands? We're, I think they're somewhere, there they are, here we are. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Take that, Brooklyn, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Take it. Before I close, I, I would like to also honor uh, Rick Beyer. You've heard his name many times today. If you don't know Rick, you should. He began working on this project 19 years ago, and he's been working on getting the gold medal for nine years. Rick, you're about to hit your 20-year mark on this project, and it ought to come with a pension, my friend. Um, it's, it's taken a long, long time. <laughs> In 2005, Rick was introduced to a woman who was the niece of a member of the Ghost Army, and her story sparked his interest and launched him on this journey of telling the stories of these brave men. And because of Rick, the Ghost Army has been recognized with websites and documentaries and books and museum exhibits and multiple monuments in Europe, and now, finally, with the Congressional Gold Medal. On behalf of everyone here, thank you for all that you've done to honor these men and their families. Rick, we, we owe you a great debt of gratitude. It hasn't even aged you. You must have started when you were 10 years old. It's amazing. At, at this point, I would like to invite, finally, so that we can all honor them appropriately, the three veterans to the stage to accept this medal on behalf of all members of the Ghost Army. And feel free to applaud as I call their names. First, Mr. Bernie Bluestein.
Second, Mr. Seymour Nussenbaum. Finally, Mr. John Christman. Thank you. And if I could have uh, join us here to the front, Mr. Rick Beyer, uh, Leader McConnell, uh, Leader McConnell, Leader Jeffries, Senator Collins, and Markey, Representatives Malloy, Custer, and Stewart, Secretary Warmoth, General Brown, and General George. Could you join us on the stage or in, in the front for the photo? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe on stage so we can get everybody. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bernie Bluestein, veteran, 603rd Camouflage Engineers, 23rd Headquarters Special Troops.
Well, as all of you know, I'm not a speaker. <laughs> and uh, I came up here not to make a speech, but to just personally thank a few people that deserve my highest regards and thanks. The number one goes to, to Rick Byers. Rick Byer started this whole thing. If it wasn't for Rick, I wouldn't be up here along with my comrades here. He took the initiative when the uh, information was released from the government and immediately decided to notarize us a little bit and let the world know that we did exist. And uh, that was quite an undertaking. He did quite a successful job. Took a lot of hard work with a lot of hardworking people canvassing Congress and getting the proper vote and getting the president to sign it. I would also like to personally thank Gary Senussi for personally sponsoring my trip here. It was very generous of his, him and his foundation and I want to personally thank him for that. I want to thank everybody in my life that I've contacted, many of you. You've all contributed to my existence and to my being who I am. And I'm very proud and happy to be here to receive this honor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rick Beyer, president of the Ghost Army Legacy Project. Thank you very much. I did not serve in the Ghost Army, just to be clear on that. So, here for you guys. It has been 80 years since the Ghost Army landed in France, 19 years since I came to this story, nine years that I've been working on the gold medal. This is a day that has been a long time coming, but it has been well worth the wait, right? I want to thank our four sponsors who all have already spoken, Senators Ed Markey and Susan Collins, Representatives Chris Stewart and Annie Custer. I saved Annie for last because she is special. She and her aide, Will Pisano, who's also here with his dad today. Will, where are you? Will, where are you? Stand up. Okay, somebody. Will Pisano. All right. They have been involved from the start. Annie was the first to introduce this legislation, and so she started the ball rolling. I also want to thank the 370 representatives and senators who signed on to this bill. Mr. Speaker, I know that you know how hard it is to get stuff done in Congress. <laughs> Am I right? Here was a bill that had no big money and a powerful interest behind it, and yet 370 representatives and senators signed on as co-sponsors simply because it was a good idea. Yes. And I want to thank, 
I want to thank the people who lobbied for this bill. Many of them are in this room. You fought for this in person, by phone, by email, by Zoom. You worked for hard for years to make this happen, and you deserve our deepest gratitude. And then, yes, yes, please. And then there are the veterans, Bernie Bluestein, John Chrisman, Seymour Nussenbaum, who are here with us today. There are other veterans who are watching from home today. Thank you. And there are all those who are no longer with us. When the Ghost Army soldiers were landing at Omaha Beach, when they were setting up inflatables in the rain near the front line in Brest, when they were freezing in the snows outside of Bastogne or drawing fire on the Gothic line in Italy, they would have been shocked by the idea that 80 years later, a grateful nation would honor them in this way. Because no soldier who served in this unit considered himself a hero. I have talked to many veterans of the Ghost Army, and each told me that the real heroes were the infantrymen and the tankers who bore the brunt of the fighting. But it has always struck me that the Ghost Army's deception mission demanded a special kind of courage. To project strength when you have none, to purposely draw enemy fire to keep it from falling on others, a dangerous business, not for the faint of heart. I note the presence in our audience today of many U.S. Army officers from the rank of sergeant all the way up to the Army Chief of Staff, General Randy George, particularly well represented. I should also mention the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is here, uh, General Brown. Particularly well represented are the U.S. Army's PSYOP forces. What the Ghost Army accomplished is not simply trapped in the past. It remains an important inspiration to the Army today. In January 1944, Private Harold Dahl of the 603rd Camouflage Engineers wrote home from Camp Forest, Tennessee after learning for the first time about the deception mission they would be carrying out. I can't tell you who else is with us, nor what we will do when we start to do it on Monday, but it promises to be very interesting. And, f and frankly, it looks like we are at last going to play a real part in the war effort. Lieutenant Gil Seltzer described it more succinctly. We all came to the conclusion that this was a suicide outfit. But they had a job to do. So they put themselves in harm's way, wielding imagination, bravado, and creativity in order that other soldiers might be able to fight and live. Four men died carrying out these missions, but most of them came home and then kept quiet about it for decades. And don't you think that's remarkable? In yeah. In July 1945, after taking part in Operation Viersen that you've heard about, the deception carried out for the crossing of the Rhine River, Harold Dahl was now a seasoned veteran. He'd been there for a year already. He wrote home again. He said, General Simpson sent us a commendation, giving us a major credit for the success of the crossing. We understand he also recommended us for a presidential citation. We are mighty proud of that little deal. The presidential unit citation never happened, likely because of secrecy. But the, uh, to get today, the 1,300 men of the Ghost Army are finally getting their due. On behalf of the veterans, Bernie Bluestein, Seymour Nussenbaum, and John Crispin, who are here today, on behalf of Private Harold Dahl and Lieutenant Gil Seltzer, whose families are here today, on behalf of other veterans watching from home, on behalf of all their fellow soldiers, their children and grandchildren, on behalf of the men whose lives they saved and their children and their grandchildren, I thank Congress and the President and everyone who helped make this happen for recognizing and honoring the laudable wartime service of the Ghost Army. Thank you so much.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Christine E. Warmoth, Secretary of the Army. Good afternoon. It's a privilege to be here today uh, with my battle buddy, the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Randy George, to say a few words on behalf of the men and women serving in today's Army who carry forward the legacy of the units that we're honoring today. As a whole bunch of speakers has said, this recognition is long overdue. The actions of the Ghost Army helped change the course of the war for thousands of American and allied troops and contributed to the liberation of a continent from a terrible evil. So we owe the three of you and all of the soldiers of the Ghost Army a great debt of gratitude for your service. We teach our Army planners that the cornerstone of what we now call military deception operations is the story. And the Ghost Army were master storytellers. Many of the, te the techniques that you all pioneered can still be found on the battlefield today. And even though technology has changed quite a bit since 1944, our modern techniques build on a lot of what the Ghost Army did, and we are still learning from your legacy. Our experience observing the war in Ukraine has shown us that even with an increasingly transparent battlefield, military deception can still have a significant impact on military operations. And like so many soldiers serving today, the Ghost Army did not seek out credit for all that it had done. Their dedication, in fact, to preserving the secrecy of the unit long after the war is a testament to their loyalty and commitment to the nation. And it probably didn't hurt that, as Mr. Chrisman told me, when they came home from the war, General Eisenhower sent all of the soldiers in the Ghost Army a letter thanking them for what they had done. But he had a PS. He said, if you tell anyone, I'll see that you hang. So that might have helped, <laughs> but I know we're all pleased that we can now recognize the three of you and the 1,100 other members of the Ghost Army. Your story continues to inspire thousands of men and women in our Army today and Americans all across the country. Thank you for serving the nation and leading the way as masters of your craft. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the benediction delivered by Chaplain Major Aaron stucker Rozowski, 338th Medical Brigade, United States Army Reserve. Good morning and blessings. I invite you to pray according to your faith tradition or deeply held beliefs as I pray in mine. Avinu Sheba Shabayim, our beloved God in heaven, in Sefer Shoftim, the book of Judges, we read of your divinely appointed servant, the judge, Gideon, who with a small, physically and mentally tough, rigorously selected elite band of 300 warriors, used a combination of audacity, skill, daring, and deception to sow confusion, fear, and most importantly, defeat into the hearts of the massive Midianite army. Thousands of years later, two elite and likewise small groups, the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops and the 3133rd Signal Service Company, the Ghost Army, again used these attributes of audacity, skill, daring, and deception to throw the evil that was Hitler and his Nazi armies into utter disarray. Their efforts saved untold allied lives, helped liberate a continent, end the unspeakable horror that was the Holocaust, and brought about the end of the Second World War. Bluntly, these soldiers helped save the world and humanity itself. Your beloved warrior servant and psalmist, David, wrote, Af nachalat 
Shafrai Alai. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Our American heritage is the ghost army. And our freedom, our liberty, is their gift and legacy to us. Again and again, you remind us, O oh God, Zahor, Zahor, remember, remember. As we depart from the capital of our great nation and this sacred ceremony today, let us all remember. Remember the men and women who advocated tirelessly for these heroes to receive the Congressional Gold Medal. The members of the House of Representatives and Senate who used their offices to make sure that this recognition would come to pass. And finally, and most importantly, the soldiers themselves of the Ghost Army. May we never forget all that they did for us. May their story be told in this and every succeeding generation. May it be told in our cities and towns, in our schools and places of worship, to our friends and neighbors, and to our families. May their righteous deeds and heroic memory live with us and a grateful nation forever and ever. May God bless the Ghost Army, the U.S. Army, and the United States of America. And let us say, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending, and enjoy the rest of your day.